Yes. Praise to the Lamb of God, who came and died on the cross for the sin of mankind. Praise to the Lamb of God, who has power over the sin. Praise to the Lamb of God, who has power over creation. Amen. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ, who made us right with God. Bible tells us, in the beginning, man and woman sin against God. Same Bible tells us, God gave the solution for sinful world. Yeah. Solution is, Messiah is going to come and die on the cross for the sinful human beings. Amen. And approximately 2,000 years ago, Lord Jesus Christ came and died on the cross. He got the victory over the dead. He makes us right with God. Amen. He Yes. So praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we want to talk about what's happening in the world. Mainly what's happening in the Muslim majority countries. Yes. We all heard from the news. In Indonesia, non-Muslims are being persecuted. In Indonesia, people are going to prison because they do not like something about Islam. In Nigeria, Christians are being persecuted. They burn their life. Women are being kidnapped and used as a sex slave. In Egypt, our brothers and sisters are being persecuted. They have been killed by a group of people who identify themselves as Muslims. Yes. Yep. So, persecution is all over the world. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about why these people are persecuting non-Muslims. So we're going to use the scripture called the Quran and the Hadith to back up our claims of why they're killing non-Muslims. Because it is actually commanded in their faith. As Islam teaches, people who do not worship Allah, yeah. Then you treat them differently. Islam teaches different rules for different people group. Yeah. Christians and Jews identify as the people of the book. Christians and Jews are as identified people of the book. Still, still Islam encourages people to follow Allah and Muhammad. Yes. On the other hand, you've got Polytheists. So, what does Islam teach us for to Muslims? How Muslim needs to engage with those people? Mm, interesting. Shall we read some scripture? Yeah. So let's first identify what, how does Allah view non-Muslims. So we go to the Quran. We look at the teachings of Allah, teachings of Muhammad, and we want to see what is the how much Allah loves. Yes, so we're going to start reading with, which one shall I start? Surah 98. Let me start with Surah 98 verse 6. It says, those who reject the truth among the people of the book and among the polytheists will be in hellfire to dwell, to dwell therein, for they are the worst of creatures. So it's here talking about people among the people of the book, which are Jews and Christians and the polytheists, which can be Hindus or some other religions, they are the worst of creatures. Not just the worst of humans, creatures, which means we're worse than pigs in the eyes of Muhammad and in the eyes of Allah. So in Samoa, there is a problem with the love language Allah uses towards Jews and Christians. You are the worst of creatures. Yes. Yet same Quran also talks about the disbelievers, those who are not Muslim, and Quran states that Allah does not love disbelievers. You are not loved by Allah because of your belief. 
because of your belief. Yeah, it says in Surah 3, 31 to 32. It says, say, if you love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you and forgive your sins. This is Muhammad talking. Allah is forgiving, merciful. Say, obey Allah and the messenger. But if they turn, Allah loves not the disbelievers. Surah 3, Ayah 31 to 32. So Quran doesn't only call people of the book first of the creatures. Quran doesn't only say Allah doesn't love who, the, who are disbelievers. Yes. Also Quran tells, tells Muslims how they need to deal with non-Muslims. It is not loving language again. Quran tells us Muslims need to deal with non-Muslims very harshly. Can we look at those verses yeah. together? This is in Surah 9 now. Surah 9, 73 says, Prophet, strive hard against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and be harsh against them because their abode is hell and worst indeed is their destination. So it's here talking about the disbelievers, which is me and anyone else not believing in Allah, and the hypocrites. Hypocrites are ones who, be, who claim to believe in Allah, but they're not practicing it or they're not doing what Allah is telling them. So the Quran says, be harsh against them, these people. And then we've got more examples in Surah 9, verse 123. Yes. Surah 48. Verse 29. People, people who are identified as non-Muslims, you deal with them harshly. That's what the Quran says. So if Muslims, if you disagree with this, then come up with a better claim. The Quran clearly says for you to uh, treat me harshly. That's what the Quran says. The Quran says I'm the worst of creature as the people of the book. Surah 973. I still love you. You are very good. And you You're a Christian. That's why. You're a Christian. I don't think that Islam does not advocate that. So any Muslims here that think Islam is a religion of peace? No Muslims. So no hands up. No, there are Muslims. Okay. What does it make you to believe Islam is the religion of peace? You put your hand up. Why did you put your hand up? What was the question? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, if you believe... Can you come closer, sir? Can you come closer? If you believe Islam is a religion of peace, can you give us a Quranic verse that says Islam is a religion of peace? You can't? Okay. Okay, basically... So, now we have to define for a Muslim what, peace what is means. the definition of the peace. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't have the Oxford Dictionary with me, but let me give you the Christian definition of the peace. According to Christian, the Christian scripture, peace comes only through Lord Jesus Christ. It is Lord Jesus Christ who gives people peace with themselves and with God. But worldly peace is when you love your enemy, when you want good for them, mm. when you forgive your enemies, when mm. you pray for them, when you really, really love them, and when you mean that you love them. So, with that definition, okay. Come with closer. That definition, Come closer, sir. Come with closer. With that definition, sir. So we can you hear you. With my definition, which, let me finish my sentence. With that definition, would you, would you, no, you, you, yeah, you wanted to stop me because you, I thought you heard enough. So. No, 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 no. If you are to have a conversation, just, it's just be like concise and precise about what you're saying. It's all like four or two hours. And then okay. expect me to yeah. answer to your question. Yeah. So, so she did. She am, answered it. I am sorry to hear at Speaker's Corner. I am sorry to hear at Speaker's Corner. As a Muslim, you are demanding me how I need to answer your question. I am going to repeat my answer. Okay, she's going to repeat it. She's going to repeat it. Just listen. I'm going to repeat my answer. Just listen. One more time. Sir, what's your name? What's your name, sir? Sir. 
Go on. Say it, just say it, just say it. Just say it, just say it. All right, listen, listen now, one more time. Yeah, listen, go on. Okay, I'm gonna repeat my answer. She's gonna answer about peace. Okay, what is peace according to you? The definition of peace, yeah. According to your definition. She's gonna answer it. According to you. She's going to answer it, listen. I am not going to play your silly games at Speaker's Corner. Listen. I am going to repeat once again. As a Christian, when we say peace, Where are you going? we are talking about the relationship with man and with God. Christian understanding of peace takes place only through blood of Lord Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, love your enemies. God gives us peace with himself and with one another. Exactly. Where the definition of the peace is when you love people who do not love you, when you love your neighbors, when you love others, and when you mean that. And your job is to you do your best that people love and respect one another. Exactly. It wasn't Christian. Yeah. So according to the Quran, it says Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful amongst themselves. So the Quran advocates for you to be severe against me. I'm a disbeliever. She's a disbeliever. You're supposed to be severe against us. Surah 48, Ayah 29. If you don't believe me, go and read it. So as we explain the definition of the peace, the gentleman who, may, who put his hand up... Where is he? He's gone. Islam is the religion of peace, yeah. walked away. He's gone, yeah. So, two options. He had a problem to back up his claims regarding the definition of the peace. Yeah. Or he just choose to go. So, since we don't have a Muslim who can back it up, Islam is the religion of peace, hopefully people will stop telling us Islam is the religion of peace. Yes, yeah, so, so let's continue. While Quran identifies Christians and Jews as the worst of creatures, yep. while Quran tells us Allah doesn't love those who are not Muslims, while Quran tells us Muslims need to treat non-Muslims harshly, harshly, did Muhammad, as he engaged with many people of the book, many non-Muslims, did Muhammad engage with them nicely, had a couple of cup of tea, cup of coffee, hot chocolate, and they have a good discussions and debates, or did Muhammad engage with them harshly? It was harshly. So we can read from uh, Muhammad's biography, it's called Sirat Rasulullah, page 515. It's a little bit long, but just bear with us. It says, Kinan bin Arabi, who had the custody of the treasure of Ban al-Nadir, was brought to the apostle, which is Muhammad, who asked him about it. He denied that he knew where it was. A Jew came to the apostle and said that he had seen Kinan going around a certain ruin every morning very early when the apostle said to Kinan do you know that if we find you have it uh, if you find you have it I shall kill you he said yes the apostle gave orders that the ruin was to be excavated and some of the treasure was found when he asked him about the rest of the rest he refused to produce it so the apostle gave orders to Al-Zubair bin Alawan torture him until you extract what is his. So kindle a fire with a flint and steal on his chest until he was nearly dead. Then the apostle delivered him to Muhammad bin Masalama and he struck off his head in the revenge of his brother Mahmud in the battle while conquering the town. This is in Sirat Rasulullah page 515. So the mercy to mankind, Muhammad, is actually not really a mercy because he ordered them to be killed. Not only be killed, but first torture. Calm down. Go on, go on, go on. Don't go, don't go off topic. 
I'm a serious When you had your sex change, why can you change your voice? Okay, you went off topic. It's got nothing to do with Muhammad. The question is... No, 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 no. Let's continue, let's continue. Let's continue. The question is, the question is, when I change my sex, how come, don't how even, come uh, I don't change my Don't even entertain that garbage. What was the content? What was the content of our claim? You're not interested. We are here talking about Muhammad being harsh to disbelievers, Muhammad ordering you to kill disbelievers, and this guy is talking about Hatu's voice. I feel sorry for you, man. I feel sorry for you. This is a serious matter we're talking about. You can walk. It doesn't change the information. Exactly. Allah calls. You're, you're ashamed, that's why. That Christians and Jews, especially, that they are the worst of creatures. Yeah. Allah commands in the Quran they should be treated harshly. It still doesn't change that Muhammad was ordering torture, torturing, and killing of other people. Exactly. And still, that brings up the question is Muhammad being faithful to the Quran? Is Muhammad being good Muslim? What is the application of that for our Christian brothers and sisters? And even for non Muslims in Muslim majority countries. Sir. Do you even turn up the telly and then watch what's happening to Christians in Nigeria? Do you turn up the telly and listen what's happening to Christians in Egypt? Do you have an answer, sir? No. Are you asking me a question? We are. She's looking at you. If you have an answer, answer the question. Amazing, amazing day. Islamic Dawah uh, turns up to speak his Quran, yet doesn't even give attention to the word of Allah. I know Allah and his word and Muhammad does not deserve any attention. All right, let's see how we deal with this one. Deal with this one. Let me read your scripture and then respond. Let me read it. You're, you're diverting, sir. You're diverting. Go to Surah 4829, Surah 973. Answer Surah 973. In incomplete Quran. Can you find such a verse like this? In incomplete Quran. Yeah. Talking about your God. Right. In the Sanhedrin 106a. Yeah, of the Talmud 106a. Was your God a bastard and his mother a harlot? Can you find such a verse like that in the in the Quran? Go. How is that answering sir. the question, sir? No, sir. You just deflected from the main points. Let's just clarify. And that is how they are. Uh, Jesus a bastard. Let's just clarify. Yes, let's clarify. I am Christian. And we follow this I book. Follow Are you not Lord a Christian Zionist? Jesus hey. Christ. Are you not a Bible. Christian Zionist? For me Bible. to follow Lord Christian Jesus Zionist. Christ, I Are go to the Bible and Bible, Bible. only. I don't go what people say about Jesus. Exactly. I don't follow that. They are not my example. So Who's your example, Atu? Lord Jesus Christ. Who's their example? Exactly, and he's deflecting from the main points. As Muhammad is an example, we just read how Muhammad ordered torching the people. Muslims are hidden. Muslims are hidden with the certain phrases which people brought about Jesus. Yeah. Here's the good thing about Christian faith and Christian God. God can, God can stand for the questions 
that there Brown is a can barrage. Can answer the question. Wait, can you what's your name? Question? What's your name? Mr. Brown. Can you answer Mr. The Brown. My name is Mr. Brown. Can you quote the Bible? We don't believe the Talmud. Quote the Bible. But the Bible the, the you believe the Quran and the Hadith. No, no, no. We're not talking about. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, listen. Mr. Brown, we don't believe that. We don't believe. But do you believe in the Quran? Do you believe in the Quran? Yeah, it might have mental health. Yeah. Speakers corner, they know it. What the Christians believe? Quran does not understand what I believe. Deal with the Quran, sir. Muslims go to the different books. Deal with the Quran. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Let's continue. Outside of my Bible. Exactly. I am not here to defend. We don't. We don't believe in it. Are you? Are you? Are you okay? Are you okay? We don't believe in it. Yes, I can find. They say you're messed up, man. Come closer. Come closer. Listen before you open your mouth, my sisters. I have the same similar verse in the Quran. Go for it. Let's go for read it. it. Go for it. I want to hear the word bastard. Go for it. Okay. So you pronounce that part when it comes to that. As a no. female, I'm not going to pronounce No. That. What is it? Let me see it. And Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her farsh. So we blow into her farsh. Her farsh. You, can you please be extra kind How is that and enlighten us? Bastard. Enlighten us. How is it similar uh, to a bastard or a harlotter? And what is it? What is Allah the angel going to be blowing into Mary? How is that similar to the word harlotter? And then the angel blowing into Mary. No, no, he, he, he's, uh, he's, 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 he's deflecting. So we don't need to entertain him. The same as blowing. We don't need to entertain deflectors. I'm not talking about the Let's blood, move on. Sir. Don't worry, yeah. he's deflecting. He he knows he can't answer, so he has to go to the Talmud. We don't believe in the Talmud. So don't go to the Talmud. I don't care. Read the Bible. We read the Bible. Richard, Dorcas. Sir, silly, man. Address is my Bible. You're silly, you're silly. Address is my Bible. I don't care. I read what they write, but I follow. Bible yeah, as itself. Exactly. 66 books and yes. count the, the fullness of God. That's the Quran so let's continue. We already saw yeah. Allah tells Christians and tell Jews you are the first of creatures. Yes. Allah does you not want the disbelievers. We saw Allah said this harshly. The disbelievers. Yeah. Because you we will not talk about the Zionists. Muhammad we'll talk about your God people that way. harshly. Come on. And now, let's see. Have this Allah. <laughs> Allah. <laughs> Allah. <laughs> Allah. <laughs> Allah. <laughs> Muslims. Yeah. And then describes Muslims, brother. Surah 3, 110? 110? Or Sahih al Bukhari? Where shall I go? Alright. Surah 3, ayah 110. You are the best of peoples, evolved from mankind, enjoying what is right, forbid what is wrong, and believing in God. So, who are the best of people? Muslims are the best of people. Whoa. That's what your Quran says. That didn't look like the huh? best of the people, but let's see. What does Islam say? What is the being best of the people? It says how many people get paid. That's what it says. How many do you get paid? Sahel Bukhari. We stick we stick with the topic. Best of the people for the people. And you bring them with chains on their necks until they embrace Islam. Let me read it, let me read it. Wait, wait. Narrated Abu Huraira. The verse says, You are the best of people ever raised up for mankind, Muslims. Means 
the best of people for the people. As you bring them with chains on their necks until they embrace Islam. Sahih al Bukhari, Volume 6, Number 60, Number 80. Read it yourself. Sahih al Bukhari, Volume 6. I'm giving you the reference. So if you say no, if you say no, you disagree with Sahih al Bukhari, not me. Sahih al Bukhari. Yes. Do, you, do you speak English? Where is the problem? The problem there is... There is a problem. You don't say there is a problem. Oh. You put the chains on the people's neck. Oh. After they become a Muslim, oh. you don't say... Is that right? Is that right? Is that right or wrong? Is that right or wrong? I don't know. What you Why are you saying that's not a problem then? I don't know. Why did you say that's not a problem? Just a moment, just a moment. Just a moment. Okay, just a moment. There's a big problem. Brother, just a moment. Take the hand of this. Why? So, yeah, so let me, let me just handle this. You don't think, you don't know if it is right or wrong, put his chains on the people's neck until they become a Muslim. Okay, is that right or wrong? You can even not. Right or wrong? What do you want to say? Are you saying that Muslims are going around on a rampage putting chains on people's necks for no reason until they became Muslim? What's the scenario? Did you hear what I read? I read the last bit because it was a lot of noise. All right, listen then. Sahih al Bukhari, volume 6, yeah, number 60. Narrated Abu Huraira. So this is your uncle, uh, Muslim, uh, Muhammad's companion. The verse You Muslims are the best of peoples ever raised up for mankind. Do you agree with that? You Muslims are the best of people ever raised up for mankind, which means the best of peoples for the people. Yeah? As you bring them with chains on their necks until they embrace Islam. Is that right or wrong? Until they embrace Islam, I'll give you the context. What does embrace Islam mean? What does embrace Islam? Do you have the hadith with you? Uh, volume six, Sahih al Bukhari, volume six, chapter sixty. All right, if that is. I'm sure he is. <laughs> Let me respond. Let me respond. Okay, Sir, we're going to ask you a question. Are you wait. over 18? Pardon? Are you over 18? Yes, I am over 18. Okay, so you are over 18 and you are telling us actually maybe it means something else. While Muhammad is saying, while Muhammad is saying, actually it is coming from Allah and Muhammad is, sir, I listened to you, can you just listen what I am saying? Every week you are here, hate the Muslims. You're supposed to be Christians, you should love your own religion. Why do you come here each week and only do is attack Muslims? Why do I attack Islam? Do you have proof do do that we hate Muslims? We really what the Quran and the Hadith says, and you're telling me I'm a hate preacher. Of their necks until they embrace Islam. Simple. That is hate speech. That is hate speech. Yes, so, exactly. What? How Muslims are taking this? Answer this question. Don't go to the Bible. We, we'll go to the Bible. So why can't you not answer the question first? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Muslims, so, they can't answer. Did you follow on the news? Abu Huraira. I'm just answering your question. I am answering your question. Did you follow on the news? What happened to the Christian pastor in Nigeria this week? So, no, no, you didn't. You haven't followed it. Okay, so, that's it. In Nigeria, Christian priests are burned and their wives have been kidnapped. Same in Egypt. As a sex slave. Yeah. Okay. What news, by the way? What news? BBC. Who are we talking about? What was the news? Oh, amazing. BBC doesn't even mention because it is the persecution of the Christians. Sir, it has been all over the news. It has been all over. 
burada diyor. Okay, Sayın you know what? Let's make this simple. People, they are persecuting. They are persecuting people, especially non-Muslims around the world. Today I am standing here as someone who concerned for Christians, brothers and sisters, and also who concerns for non-Muslims. Sir, sir, no, no. She, she's trying to, she's trying to give you uh, what Islam teaches. Okay, let me let's ask you a question. What's your name? Please, hang on. What's your name? I you said we are addressing the chain. What you said, it went into something else. All I asked you was what was the news channel. You started saying, oh, no BBC don't tell your news. I didn't say that. I'd like to know what news channel you're talking about. It's very all over the news. Very rare. The BBC re re uh, report things about things happening in Africa. Because usually they don't give a shit about what's going on within the black communities or Africa. So that's what I'm thinking. Who's she on about? It's probably BBC. Because surely BBC don't talk about these sort of things. That's what I'm asking you for. I'm not so, calling you a liar. It is. It has been all over the news, okay? You can just go to the Google from your phone and then look at the killings of the Christians in Nigeria. It will give you lots of the, um, news channels and it will help you. So while Islam teaches, Islam teaches, Muslims are the best of the people. Reason that they are best of the people because they put in non-Muslims with the chains on their necks Next, until, until they become a Muslim. Exactly. That is the best of the people definition. What is they your... are the professional persecutors. Okay, what is your answer they to that? They are the professional criminals. Apparently, he has an answer to that. Go on. What? Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. is talking about prisoners of war. Can you can you take it out and show us prisoners of war? It doesn't say prisoners of war. It doesn't say that. He doesn't need to take it out because he read the original Quran. No, we're not talking to you. We're talking to him. No, no, no. He read the Arabic Quran. We're not talking about the Quran. We're not talking about the Quran. We're talking about the Hadith. First of all, your meaning is wrong. It contradicts the clear Quran. It says La Ikraha fi Din. So the scholar said this Hadith cannot be referring to what you think it refers. Can you show us? Construct my opinion. No, sir. Because you are just making a claim which already disagrees with your Hadith. No, you need to show us. Show us in Sahih al-Bukhari what you're saying. Because we're showing you. Take it out and show me. Take it out and show me. Simple. He's claiming that there's more context to that. So why don't you get a pen and put a mark next to it so when you go and do more research like you've done today, you can find it. When you're asking people to pull up, when you pull up, when you ask people to pull up. Is it fair? Is it fair to ask him to show us? It's fair. That's it then. No, we have it right here. I have got the full hadith here and full ha hadith. So I've got the hadith in front of me. Hadith doesn't say you do this when it is poor. This is what you are imposing into your hadith, and I don't want to. He's wrong. And the hadith is right. Why? your view into the hadith. The hadith speaks all, for itself exactly. and then it say, it doesn't tell us this is when the war Can happens, this something? is when this happens. Show us where it says war. I have, you have to let me answer then I can talk about some of the evidences. The, there is a clear verse in the Quran you cannot force someone who is not a Muslim to accept Islam. What this hadith is talking about is, for example, the examples of the Mamluk, the Mamluks, who were taken Can you give us the verse from the Quran? Wait, 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 yeah, he's going to, apparently he's going to back it up. Go on, go on, go on, go on. How come you go for Excuse me, how I told you, he didn't know my father's a scholar, I told you this before. Go on, talk. How come you're both assuming that he's, he's uh, not being honest? Surah 489. How come you're assuming that? How come you're assuming that what he's saying is not true? Because we're reading his own scripture. I don't know. And he's disagreeing with his scripture. I just know the verse. He's not disagreeing with that. He's saying there's a context behind it and I'm explaining it. Show us the context. Have you read, for example, the explanation of Sahih Bukhari? What? He's not showing us. Anyone can say what he's saying. No, 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 no. This little kid can say that. No, he won't because you probably don't know. He doesn't even probably know. I said this little kid can say yeah. that. Abu Jahl, can I say something? But Have you read Fatih al-Bari, the explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari? On this verse? 
on this hadith in Bukhari. On this verse? On the hadith in Bukhari. So yeah, this, this particular scripture? Yeah, yes, have you read it or not? We just read it for you. What Abu Huraira okay, said. Daniel, no one Daniel in Islamic focus. scholarship. Da Daniel just Can I say something? No Yusuf, one in Islamic scholarship gives up a hadith like that. Your name, you the explanation. Oh, oh, your, yeah. So, you told us your father is a Muslim scholar, just, Islamic yeah. scholar, I'm not up from right and now you are just trying to explain and force your view into the Quran and into the hadith. I'm you saying, are. Let you me, are. Let me just tell you. Let me just explain what's happening. Quran is very well detailed, very explained. Is that English? Sir, so, while, while the Quran states Muslims are the best of people, suddenly I am strongly disagreeing with Quran because I look at the example of you. It doesn't look like you are best of the people. While you are not even allowing me to speak. According to who? The Quran, you mean? There's no best of people. Everyone's the same. Everyone's equal. So that means you disagree with the Quran. That means you disagree with the Quran. Surah 3110. You disagree with it. The best of people are Muslims. Surah 3110. And then we need to ask them about apostasy. It's very simple. While this song, Muhammad treats non-Muslims harshly, while this song, while this song, Bukhari states, best of the people are the ones who bring people, um, what is that thing? They chains on their neck, on their neck. Until they, they embrace Islam. Islam. Let's see. Okay, I'm explaining to you this verse is talking about. Is he, is he your war. spokesperson no, or no, are you, she, has he seen it? I, no, we're reading what the hadith and says, sir, and what the Quran wrong. says. He's saying it's wrong, he's Prove it wrong. then. Prove that this is wrong. I said, Prove I that the hadith and the Quran are wrong. Wait, you said it. You said no, it. Wait. He's not saying the Quran's wrong. He's saying the way. Can one of you talk? No, 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 no. Why the Quran? Where's the sincerity? No, no, no. You, you're going. You're going. You're, you're not doing. He's, he's not showing me nothing. I don't want to hear it. Took it Show from me. You. There is a I don't understand them there is a people who come to speak as going as part of the Islamic Dawah I'm not part of the Islamic Dawah. Who's the Islamic Dawah? It's like Tapia and Tapia. Are you a Muslim? So, do you do Dawah? Actually, right now I'm responding to your question. Okay, Daniel. Question. Okay. I need no, to no, the question, do question is, do you do Dawah? Follow the Iron Lady, okay? Do you do Dawah? Because you're a Muslim. I'm not even giving you dawah. I'm just listening to what you're saying. So, while I came here to get a tan, you know. While Allah and Muhammad doesn't give people any right, any right to practice what people believe, yes, and also they have the freedom of speech. So what does La Ikrah have to do? Does Allah give you freedom of speech? Yes, no, what does La Ikrah have to do? Yeah, make it simple okay. like that. So Allah gives you freedom of speech. Yes. Okay, let's see. Does Allah give me as a non-Muslim freedom of speech? You have freedom of speech? Does Allah give her freedom of speech? Can I ask you a question? If so, you, oh you said yes. Lord. Now I'm going to read the verse and I want to reconcile now, this verse now, with what answer, you said. Let's see what your Quran says. Surah 5:33. The recompense of those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger and do mischief in the land is only that they shall be killed or crucified or their hands and their feet cut off on the opposite side and be exiled from the land. He's asking me what does mischief mean? Let's see what. Fasad means. Yeah. 
is referred to, usually referred to, especially in this context, if you read the, the, the tafsir, what, what, killing people, innocent people. So for example, highway robbery. For example, carpet bombing, carpet bombing entire nations. For example, right? Uh, 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 for example, going and uh, uh, just robbing people in their homes. That's considered facade. Facade is it's like when milk goes off, when the natural order is, is gone off. It's not, it's not and, right. And that comes from? Tafsir, did you say? Read any Tafsir. Okay. Any tafsir. So, tafsir. Read tafsir. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read what Ibn Kathir says. Yeah? I'm going to read it for you, sir. We I'm have Ibn Kathir what Tafsir. Saying, yeah, he's correct in saying, okay, you might have made a mistake. Why don't you just have a pen? I am going to read the Tafsir, and then we will see how Tafsir, how Tafsir destroys your brain. What is this? What is this Quran? This is Tafsir, by the way. And a translation of the Quran is a form of Tafsir. We're talking about Ibn Kathir. Read it, read it. Listen to what Ibn Kathir says. Do not make mischief on the earth. That is disbelief and act of disobedience. Abu Jafar said blah 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 Do not commit acts of disobedience on earth. Their disbelief is disobeying Allah because whoever disobeys Allah on earth or commands that Allah Allah be disobeyed, he is mischiefing. Okay, can I respond about mischief? Okay, fine. No, sir. No, she just answered the mischief. Come on, you man. You told me that Who is described as a mischief in the Quran? For example, Don't Pharaoh. Oh, Pharaoh is described as a mischief. That was the definition came from the top six, yet it confirms Let's read that too. Let's read the... Uh, the definition. Fasad means mischief and that is even when you disobey Allah or tell other people to disobey Allah. And then it goes on and on and on. Let's read what Ibn Kathir says. Ibn Kathir says, Allah said, next, the recompense of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and do mischief in the land it's only that they should be killed or crucified or their hands and their feet cut off on the opposite side and be exiled from the land. Mentioned here means, yeah, wage war means opposite and contradict. And it includes disbelief, blocking roads and spreading fear in the fairways. So disbelief, disbelief also is there. Look, disbelief, oppose and contradict, blocking roads is also there. So that's causing mischief so in the land. Question. So last question. My question that's even Kathir, brother. Does Allah give me freedom of speech? You said yes. Why? It's very simple. Quran disagrees with you. Allah does not give me freedom of speech. Allah does not give freedom of speech to non Muslims. If it is, we need order. We need order, sir. If it is, Allah. No, let him, don't, let him, don't say that. No, I know you shut him down. Why are you shutting him down? Let him speak. Serious. You know, Ibn Kathir, can you answer Ibn Kathir? Can you answer Ibn Kathir? Answer Ibn Kathir on mischief in the land. Have you read the whole tafsir? What it means. Yes, tafsir is only, it's only one, one verse. Can I try to justify it? I have read all that. Yeah, the whole tafsir, we've got it as well. Can I justify it? Check it out, read it. Justify. 533. I'm just going to justify it. So you are going to. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, oh I am going to just so you are going to justify for us why Allah is ordering chopping the head, chopping the hands and feet exactly. of people who mischief. Yes. Because of disbelief. No, he's going to no, justify no, no, no. that. Yeah, just, justify it. Justification isn't from a personal belief. I'm just being a democrat at the moment. This reminds me, this is very similar to what I read about God ordering Moses to go to a village and kill the men, women and children. It's the same thing here. So if you don't think this is right, was God wrong in ordering Moses to go and do this? So you're not answering this. You're asking a question. So, fine. So can you wow. Oh, can the police? Yeah. Hang on. You're a funny guy. Hang on. Do you know if the shoe on the other foot? And I, and I reacted like you. Well, you say, oh, you're scared to answer. Just answer, just answer it. Can I answer it? Please. Fine. So, I ask you the question. 
sorry, you wanted to justify why Allah is taking the freedom of speech away by ordering chop the head, hands and feet of people no, who no, do no, the no, mischief. No. And then your response to that was, yeah. isn't that uh, God in the Bible does with Moses? Yeah. Can you please provide the verse for me from the Bible where God says to Moses, go and kill people in that village because they are mischievous. Yeah, he's the Bible for you. I want you to show, I want you to show the verse and then we discuss. See, he's not going to do it, man. All he's just going to do is pull out one. As you said, oh, that's the question. Yes, that's the question. I didn't make a claim. So your Bible says this. I said, isn't that what God told Moses to do? That's show us. Show us. Where? So where? Where? God where? Said Moses where? Do show us. You can't go into a shop and say, have you got any uh, Rubicon? Oh, yeah. Here's the menu. Show me. Where, and, the, and the shopkeeper says, yeah. uh, show me where the Rubicon is. I'm asking you Unfortunately, question. this is more serious than that. No, I'm asking you the Show question. me in the Bible where you... Sir, we asked you about Ibn Kathir and you go to the Bible. See, this, is this is how dishonest you are, man. This is how unfair they are. Let's move on. Let's move on because they don't answer. Let's just summarize for you. Where's the humility of Jesus? Run your march up to Ataka city. Make its people an offer of peace, says God to Moses. Yeah, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. So you can go, go and see. read it from the Bible. Exactly, let's move on. Yeah. So why Islam doesn't give people freedom of speech? We see in a Muslim majority countries, our Christian brothers and sisters are being persecuted, being sent to prison because of the teachings of Islam. Yes. But does Islam give you practice to believe what you want to believe? Freedom no. of belief. Does it give you that belief? No, it doesn't. Because those people no, in Muslim majority no. countries are no, being persecuted because of their belief. Yeah. Because they are not Muslim. So, what does Islam teach us about that? It says, fight those who do not believe in Allah, nor in the latter days, nor for, uh, prohibit what Allah and his apostle have prohibited, nor follow the religion of the truth, out of those who have been given the book until they pay the jizya and feel themselves subdued, Surah 929. Very famous verse. Alan, as you read it until verse 33, you say, may Allah curse them. They desire to put out the might of Allah with their mouth and the religions of truth, that he might cause it to be prevailed over all religions. It is not only freedom of speech, yeah. but it is also freedom, the right to believe what you want to believe. Quran doesn't give you that right. No. Muhammad did not give that right. Because Islam doesn't give people that right. We look at the world and we see in Muslim majority countries, non-Muslims are being persecuted. Yes. Yep. People are in prison because they are not Muslim and they commented, practice their freedom of speech, something about Islam. Islam is destroying the world. Islam is destroying the mankind. It's a dangerous religion. At all. There's no peace in Islam. Nothing whatsoever. We're going to continue. Just, just huh? No, 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 uh, let's do the uh, apostasy. So basically, in Islam, there's no freedom, no peace. If you leave Islam as a Muslim, the penalty is death, apostasy law. Sahih al-Bukhari says it and Surah 489 says it. And we've been talking here about so many things. For example, Surah 98 verse 6, yes, about us being the worst of creatures and Muslims being harsh against disbelievers. So, the conclusion of the matter is, Jesus Christ came to save every human being. And 
We are asking all you Muslims to consider what Islam is saying, to really search your scriptures and really contradict what it says if it does contradict each other and consider what Jesus said that he came to save you and he came to liberate you from the darkness of Islam. He is the way, the truth and the life. He's called the Prince of Peace. There is peace in Jesus Christ. So come to know who he is. God bless you.